it would be a disservice though to not talk about step and depth and actually what it's here for so with this shape you know we can't really we could show step on a cube but really can't show step that good on a cube so we're just going to you know just deform this shape and just get a more interesting shape going here we'll just apply the scale so that way we can bevel it right and we'll go ahead and sharpen which will mark all the crucial edges and at this time we're going to change the workflow over to weight which is something that I rarely do but for times when you're modeling a shape that's very specific you may want to actually use a weight workflow so that way I could you can go in and just basically unmark areas that you don't want influenced by the and it's not a good idea to do it there but say if we wanted to do it here we could just unmark this area and actually just have it be able to be beveled another way or manually we could do the same thing here you know let's say this was against a hard transition in fact at this moment you see that you know the moment that i unmark it it turns off the shading for the smooth so it makes it look terrible this actually brings us to a legacy option that's connected with step called demote demote basically will remove the bevel weight from the edge while keeping the sharp marking allowing us to you know keep our shading intact but still have this weight workflow going and the benefit of working in weight like i was saying in a previous area was that you know whenever you perform a boolean the boolean won't directly show in the bevel itself until you perform a c sharpen however this was you know one of our only options back in 2.79 so the question of, and right here we have the shading issue, how would we fix this? Well, I would shift click sharpen and just let auto smooth handle it because that's your only friend whenever you're dealing with situations like this. But we're looking at this and let's say we wanted to actually step this up a different level. So right now we're in weight. And so if we go into this, we can basically choose to step. And now we've basically applied all the modifiers up to this point. So it's a very destructive workflow when used with weight, but it does allow us to basically, you know, control click bevel, or I guess in this case we sharpen and then we can add a bevel and we see that this is only beveling this new area. And so you can progressively work this way by just working an area, applying everything that's happening there by just stepping it and then moving on to the next one. So we'll step it again while this mod is still here it's not the same mod that mod's gone that mod's been applied this is a different mod who dis you know you just can't tell but it, it just happened it just happened to us so we'll just perform a difference and we see that this is on its own level so we'll control click to perform a c sharp in operation which will update the bevel so there's been a degree of integration between c sharp and bevel previously c sharp never supported bevel but now we've actually got the ideologies to almost connect and so you see that while i'm able to adjust this area individually it's also marking some areas around it that's causing some problems so we can actually address that by i would say let's have this selected and be in face mode and then alt h select everything else and we want to basically demote everything around us from having edge marking. So the easiest way to do that is to just go and demote that. And we can just now, we'll use our um, select boundary loop to select a boundary loop of our selection. And we can just mark that back, giving us a nice isolated bevel happening here. But we also see that, you know, with some of our angle choices, things did not work out. So we may have to get out here and just do a few corrections because we may not have given it the most segments when it came to working this way but i just wanted to at least do a segment to show how you would use step and how step is still a thing even now except you know you wouldn't use this except with shapes that you're very specific with um, if you're familiar with moi this was kind of our attempt at making a moi style workflow of working very destructively and adding fillets and dealing with those fillets and getting them right with the newer version of step being a uh, non-destructive version so to show that in action we'll take this shape and delete it and we'll just bring about a cube and we'll go in our control tilde helper and we'll set things back to angle and so now if let's say we have a bevel and let's say we wanted to put another bevel level on this well because we're in non-destructive now or in angle we can just go to step 
and we see that it ran a step non-destructive and all it did was it added a new bevel at 50% of the previous. So this might be the fourth different way that I've shown you guys that you can add a different bevel on the mesh at 50% of your previous bevel using the half bevel system, which is something that I long wanted inside of HardOps to experiment with and now has been integrated almost everywhere. So in this area, I performed a difference and it actually put it on the same level as this piece, which we could want, but let's just say I don't want that. So what we can do is actually go in here, step it again, select this shape, select this shape, perform a difference, and now this thing is kept on its individual level and this area also, you know, we have to control scroll to it, also has its own individual level that can be controlled. But because all these mods are kept live, they are dependent on each other for survival. So that means that mistakes you can make on an earlier mod could definitely haunt you in a later mod and cause a type of mesh cascade that could possibly send you all the way to the desktop. So non-destructive to me is a little bit of a misleading uh, term in a way when it comes to Blender because the control systems of maintaining previous levels whenever you're dealing with subsequent levels isn't quite there yet. So unless there's a series of complex drivers, you know, helping you chain everything together or some sort of detection system that detects, you know, just your mesh just flying up in the space, you know, let's say we went and just messed with this thing to infinity, uh, it's not going to go past a certain number. And of course we can turn on clamp overlap and let clamp overlap be our guide. Where's that at? And let that just limit where we go, but it's always going to limit you directly to an area that's going to cause a convergence issue. So in the end, we actually just have clamp overlap on and just hope that users have the, um, knowledge and understanding to be able to tell if they're overshooting it or if they're going to cause a problematic issue with multiple systems stacked later down the mesh. But that is step basically in a nutshell. It exists as a destructive version, but also as a non-destructive version that's more classic. So it is something worth experimenting with, but it is something that I also tend to use more towards robot workflows, depending on the type of shapes that I'm going for. Whenever control is of the most importance, then I tend to apply certain modifiers and step and work in a very destructive manner because I know that there won't be an issue with opening this file down the road. So for that reason, step exists as a legacy option, but still has been updated for newer workflows for users who wish to have some fun with it, just adding a new bevel at 50%.